Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to talk about how to use Sentry with Django to make things a little bit easier when it comes to error tracking. So anytime you have a deployed app, so your Django app is somewhere out there and an error occurs, it may be some time before you actually know there's an error. Like you would have to actually go into the log and look, someone will have to tell you that the app didn't work as expected, or you have like an email that gets sent to you every time an error occurs. But if you want a way to manage errors that is kind of slick, so you'll see with this dashboard how it works, uh, you might want to try Sentry. And the reason why I recommend it is because it's very easy to set up. So it's very easy to see if it works well for you or not. It's not like you have to do anything complicated. So I have a very simple Django app set up here. Um, it's just like a form. So what I'll do is on the Sentry dashboard, I'll create a new project and go to Django, skip this. Okay, so this is what I need to do to get it to work. First, I need to install this package and I already have it installed so I don't have to do that again. And then I need to add this code to the settings.py file. So I'll start with the imports and I'll open up settings.py and then I need to add the init here in settings.py as well. So I'll just put it at the top. And it just has this URL that represents my account along with Django integration, which is so it knows how to handle my particular app, which is a Django app. So I'll, I'll turn debug mode to false just to get a more realistic example. And I'll put my local host as an allowed host and I'll start up the server. Okay, so now I should be able to see my app. So it is running right now. And if I wanted to cause an error in this particular app, doing something like this, trying to reference a thread that doesn't exist will throw an error. So I get this server error 500. So of course I don't see any information here because it's not in debug mode. So this is where a log will come into play. So because I have Sentry set up, I just need to go to their dashboard and look at issues and I see this does not exist. So it tells me that you know, the thread matching query does not exist. So 26 does not exist. If I go back to two, it does. And it tells me where the error occurs in the code. It gives me the all the calls that led up to the error, along with some useful information, um, like the headers, the IP address, and so on, all involved in creating the error. So what triggered this error? It tries to give you as much information as possible. And by just going through this dashboard and looking at this, you can see all the errors in your app very easily. It's not like looking at a log file, which is pretty hard to read uh, when you're not looking at the latest error. So that's all I wanted to talk about for Sentry. If you have any questions about it, just leave a question down below in the comments and I'll try to answer it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.